Hey there, welcome to episode 54 of Social Business Engine, the podcast that showcases industry thought leaders that represent modern business in action through the culture and technology of social. I'm your host, Bernie Borges of Find and Convert. Hey, thanks for listening. On this episode, you're going to meet Ellie Deutsch from Garrett Popcorn. Ellie is Associate Director, Digital and Social Media at Garrett Popcorn, where she directs all social media, website, email, affiliate marketing, agency partnerships, campaigns, promotions, and digital programming strategies worldwide. Ellie is also the face of Garrett Popcorn at conferences when she lights up the stage with the story that you're going to hear today. On this episode, you're going to discover how Garrett Popcorn has gone from a beloved local brand in its hometown of Chicago to a global brand with a presence in multiple U.S. cities, as well as the Middle East and Asia Pacific locations. You can expect to get energized by my conversation with Ellie. And if you get a little bit hungry for popcorn, too, don't be too surprised by that. Hey, this episode is sponsored by Cision. Cision is widely recognized as a leading provider of software used by public relations professionals to plan, execute, and measure influencer-oriented campaigns in one integrated platform. We've partnered with Cision to publish Social Business Journal Volume 2, a how-to guide in influencer relations. Just visit socialbusinessengine.com slash Cision, spelled C-I-S-I-O-N, and download this journal and up your influencer marketing game in 2015. And now let's get to my conversation with Ellie Deutsch from Garrett Popcorn. Ellie, welcome to the Social Business Engine podcast. Thanks, Bernie. I'm so excited to be here. Hello, everybody. Um, we appreciate you tuning in, and I'm really happy to share our Garrett Popcorn story with you all. Terrific. Well, let's get right to that story because I was really intrigued when I saw you share that story from the stage at Social Media Strategies Summit in Las Vegas. And you tell the story really well. And really the main point to your story is that um, Garrett Popcorn is not a new company. You've been around for a few years and you started as a local company and now you're global. And Ellie, you are driving the social strategy. So if you would, why don't you kind of tee up the story about how you've gone from being local to being global and how social has been a big part of that? Of course. Well, uh, Garrett Popcorn Shops has been handcrafting gourmet popcorn since 1949. So for more than 65 years, we've been um, sharing our secret family recipes um, that have inspired an honest product and generated lines of historic proportions outside of our shops worldwide. Um, we're rooted in Chicago or a Chicago tradition through and through, but we have shops all over the globe. And uh, we focus on fresh, handcrafted, locally sourced, um, high quality, natural ingredients. So our popcorn is like no other, and um, Garrett has been in the business since the beginning and really has led the way, but, you know, one of the challenges that we faced was how do we really evolve from a Chicago-based tradition into a worldwide recognized brand. So um, we spent the last 10 years here really focusing on um, bringing our brand to a global level, and we've done that through the means of, uh, you know, actual social media exposure, um, sharing our story with all of our fans, and then, you know, having people really get to the nitty-gritty of who we are and what they enjoy, and that, you know, at the bottom of it all, Garrett Popcorn is happy food, so um, it's a, you know, luxury snack food. Uh, you don't get to enjoy it necessarily every single day, but when you do, it's a special treat, and everybody that has had it has a their own Garrett Popcorn story, whether they visited us in um, Chicago at some of our flagship stores, um, or they were standing in line at Harajuku in Japan for over three hours waiting for our handcrafted happiness. So we love sharing the story, and most importantly is that, you know, it's our handcrafted happiness that everybody gets to enjoy joy um, in all of our shops worldwide. So Ellie, thank you for really just framing it all up so beautifully. You do that so well. And and actually, if I may, I'm about to uh, do something very real time with you here. I'm looking at a picture. And of course, this is a podcast. So I'm going to 
describe the visual, and then, of course, include a, a, a picture of this in the show notes page. I'm looking at a picture of people standing in line in the cold in front of one of the Garrett Popcorn stores. So the brand is like the apple of popcorn. <laughs> people stand in line in all kinds of weather just to consume your popcorn. So have you built such a raving, loyal fan base? Great question. Well, we we're fortunate to have, to have a happy food brand, as I mentioned, but um, really it started in 1949 with the Garrett family. Um, they created uh, Caramel Crisp, the first uh, signature flavor recipe of Garrett popcorn, um, standing around the kitchen table with their family and then had the idea, you know, let's make an actual shop where we sell this. And um, popcorn was becoming a cool trend with movie watching and a theater going and whatnot. So um, they opened up their first shop in Chicago uh, in 1949. And since then, you know, so you didn't enough, work for uh, them at that time, right? Uh, no, unfortunately, I'm, I'm totally I didn't. But, um, <laughs> they really set the right path for us. Um, because, um, you know, the family had lines of historic proportions since 1949 through now. And um, it's really great to see, you know, the photo that you're showing is actually our flagship shop on Michigan Avenue. And, um, we really have this line at all times of the day through all seasons um, and, and different, you know, weather conditions. People will wait out in the freezing cold um, or an ice storm just to get their gear of popcorn. So our fans are the center of our brand and everything that we do, and we wouldn't be here without them um, as they've really, you know, um, drove the strategy for um, how we've evolved as a company. We listen to our fans. We see what we like. We survey them and ask for, you know, different feedback. And actually, our fans are the ones who coined our um, world-famous Garrett mix, which is a blended mix of sweet and savory caramel crisp and cheese corn, two of our seven signature recipes perfectly combined and shaken together um, into a bag or a tin um, and that, by far, if you haven't tried it, I, I you know, I'm biased because I love the brand and I've been a Chicago girl my whole life. But um, really, it's like nothing you've ever tasted. And um, I have even had people that don't like popcorn that will come up to me and have Garrett popcorn and they'll completely, you know, change their opinion about what it's like and what uh, eating popcorn and that whole experience is for them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cool. So um, let's talk about your your social strategy in, in a little bit more detail. You mentioned a moment ago that you listen really well to your fans. Can you elaborate on that, on what do you do with that listening and how do you put that into action? Yeah, for us, I mean, really the feedback that we get, the fans are the center of everything we do. And so we have to use social as a means of communication with our fans. Um, the brand has spoken for itself for so many years and our fans have given us great feedback. Um, and now with, you know, the means and technologies and developments that are available, we've been able to use social as a resource. And, um, you know, we pull our community and ask for questions. We directly um, message and engage with people people in a one-to-one -one conversation. Um, if there's ever any problem or customer experience related issue, we're on it right away and we're trying to change those negative experiences into a positive um, because we do know that, you know, our fans are driving the brand. So if we don't have them, then we don't have a company. And uh, we really want to focus on this experience both in shop and online and have that seamless, happy, um, you know, well-rounded Garrett popcorn shop visit wherever you are, wherever in the world. Okay. Can you speak to how your social strategy has evolved? I mean, just by the availability of platforms like Instagram and Pinterest, which didn't exist a few years ago, just how, how has the, the strategy evolved in that regard? Our social media strategy has greatly improved um, and evolved from where we were even four or five years ago um, or even last year. So um, the more time we have in this space, the more learnings we're able to do. And, you know, we are really um, doing a, a good job with our social media and, and uh, reaching people and posting and engaging. Um, but 
the focus, especially over the past year, has been on our fans and on our ingredients and sharing that story. So for us, um, it was easy to use the community members and the fan base that we've already built up and expand that, you know, globally. So we hyper-localized all of our content and our communication strategies so that we're um, serving up unique messages based on the Garrett brand that we have, but to that specific region. So we have... Um, it, totally evolved from where we were with, you know, one team that was focused on just a Chicago market into um, an international brand that has um, teammates on the ground in all of our regions, as well as agency partners that we work with for, you know, real-time um, content, um, community engagement and exposure. Okay. So uh, can you actually speak to some of the challenges associated with that? Because um, a brand that goes from local to global First of all, it doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen without some figuring it out and some hard work. And, you know, you mentioned people on the ground and agencies and that sort of thing. So can you maybe share a few things about lessons learned, challenges, that kind of thing? Absolutely. So, um, you know, the lessons we really had to go back to square one and look at the basics of where we were. Um, we did basically an audit and a reassessment of our social media strategy um, at the beginning of last year and looked at, you know, okay, what are people saying? How can we listen to them? What are the best technologies that we can use? For example, we're using Hootsuite Enterprise, um, and that allows us not only to have a, an efficient listening tool, but an opportunistic engagement tool, and, you know, everybody's being well-trained and um, professionally um advancing their careers and their knowledge of the social space based on some of these technologies. And, you know, we realigned our, go our goals and objectives um, and then put in place, you know, with all of these learnings and technologies, um, basically how we could get to the next level. So we've developed, a, you know, a more robust, um, specifically engaged strategy that focuses on our consumers, but also those um, hyper-local markets. Um, and then, you know, every day we're going in and looking for um, engagement opportunities, building content that's relevant to those communities, um, using the learnings that we have from our daily, monthly, weekly um, analytics that we drive. You know, we, we were doing a lot of this stuff, hand tracking it by um, an Excel file, pulling, uh, you know, raw da data into a file and creating pivot tables and graphs and um, whatnot to try and identify those gaps and areas for improvement. And, you know, we really had a lot of room to grow. Um, so we were taking um, our social media and what was already previously built um, and, you know, not just riding the wave, but trying to um, be on top of it and be the innovators in the space and use the right technologies and the right social channels. So one of the things that we um, have realized is, you know, not every single region that we work with needs to necessarily have every single social channel um, laid out for them. Um, for example, in the Middle East, Instagram is our most relevant channel for us and uh, the place where we should spend the most time, whereas in you know Thailand, we can play on Facebook and Twitter. Um, so we're really finding out, you know, and versus the global domestic brand actually has, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Google Plus, Tumblr, and more. Um, so we're really trying to customize our content and our um, social media strategy on each individual region um, in order to best serve up the, you know, right type of um, messaging and um, engagement that we want to have from our fans and that they would expect from us as well. Hmm. Okay, cool. All right. I want to talk a little bit about how you're using images, but first, Ellie, I want to just deliver a brief message from our sponsor, Cision. Cision is widely recognized as a leader in public relations software, and we're excited to partner with Cision on volume two of the Social Business Journal. In this how-to guide in influencer marketing, you'll discover a three-step process from Cision on how to develop an influencer relations program. And you'll hear from business experts on everything from what an ideal influencer looks like to the secret sauce of penetrating the sphere of an influencer. Additionally, we've interviewed 21 business experts that deliver bite-sized insights to give you actionable takeaways for your influ influencer relations strategy. To get your digital copy of Social Business Journal Volume 2, just go to socialbusinessengine.com slash scission, spelled C-I-S-I-O-N. Now, Ellie, you, your brand 
has phenomenal use of images. I mean, it starts with your website. When you hit your website, it is just rich in images. And then you mentioned that there's certain regions where Instagram is uh, is really the, like the primary channel. So talk a little bit about how you've been you've engaged fans through images. Because I remember in your presentation, you told some stories about some really cool things that your fans are doing in the, in the images that they take through, you know, just user generated content. Well, we're doing a lot with visual imagery as photos and videos are the most shareable content on the web. Um, so we actually are fortunate enough to have um, creative team members all over um, the world in different agencies and partners and um, locations that we have, but we really have um, a phenomenal, um, very well experienced team here in our um, headquarters in Chicago. So the five or six um, creative members that we work with as well as our content strategists and our community managers are able to help us really serve up the best most visually striking and appealing um, brand messaging that we can relay um, it is you know an initiative of our company to have you know aesthetically artistic uh, artisanal and even um, very hyper photo uh, photos and imagery that we can use across the web um, because, you know, to us, that's how we relay our brand. Um, we can talk about Gary Popcorn all day, but really we want to show you how amazing it truly is and mm -hmm. have you come to our shops or visit us online at GaryPopcorn.com to see, you know, all the types of um, products and features and, you know, flavors and everything that we have to offer. So um, I like to call 2014 as our uh, year of digital. Um, we kind of had a makeover where we redid our website. Um, we were really focused on um, a flash-based website that didn't allow people to mobily search or even um, buy products really easily. And, you know, it's just kind of a little outdated for us. So we looked for strategic partners in our website um, and relaunched um, with Gorilla Group and then um, also completely replatformed onto Magento Enterprise um, and worked with Bronto um, for our email marketing. So we found the, the perfect partners to really help us succeed, but also listen to our direction and, um, you know, visualize how we could continue to build our brand and merge into, you know, more of the digital age. So. Um, with that, we were able to kind of have this brand makeover over, as I spoke of, um, and show, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit that we have as a mom and pop shop, um, but also the unique and diverse demographic of our fans and um, our brand, which we always say is like no other. So we use that as the center and we have, you know, brand guidelines that we abide by and every single partner or agency that we work with around the world has to go through specific message training and brand training so that they understand, you know, exactly how we want our um, message to be portrayed. But also visually, you know, we have a high standard for photographs that are used and images that are created um, and we do a lot of user generated content. So we try to feed photos from fans whether it's organic or we we ask them to, you know, participate in an online campaign or promotion, um, and then we we pop by our shops, uh, you know, probably once a week at least, um, and have people all over the world share their photos, um, so that it's a true experience. We show the happiness, um, and you know, we're always thanking and always giving back, um, and surprising and delighting our fans because we see ourselves as gifting heroes and. Um, we wouldn't be able to share, you know, our handcrafted happiness with everybody um, unless we did some fun, you know, initiatives every now and again. And um, we have gotten some fantastic photos um, from our fans, you know, where people that are either buying it for their husband or wife or mom or dad, and they ended up eating it themselves. Or if you <laughs> saw, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were actually on Modern Family um, and featured with um, Cam, that, uh, a.k.a. Eric Stone Street, um, you know, has a love for Gear Popcorn, and they worked it into the show. And, you know, he's he, like many other fans we have worldwide, have, you know, a – They'll drop anything they're doing and pay whatever amount it costs to get Gara Popcorn because it's just that good. And that handcrafted, high-quality, artisanal nature is something that you can't get anywhere else. And especially because we have our secret family recipes. So um, we love sharing photos from our fans and sharing their story. We always say, 
everybody has their own Garrett story, whether it was from when they were younger or that one time they visited Chicago or maybe Dubai or Korea. Um, or Las but Vegas. We had especially, yeah. Um, <laughs> we we had a great uh, image seated um, from a fan that we totally didn't even ask her or know what was happening. And in, in the end of January, she posted a picture of her, her baby named Garrett, spelled exactly the same way, in a photo studio with about six or seven different Garrett popcorn tins of all different sizes, flavors, and designs, mm -hmm. and which, you know, must have cost at least a thousand dollars in uh, actual uh, Garrett. And uh, she wow. totally just posted it on our Facebook page and said, we love our Garrett. And, you know, we thanked her. She's a fan from New Hampshire. And we were so excited um, about seeing this photo. And I mean, we have it even framed in our office now because that's how much we love seeing these type of things from our fans. So yeah. we're always trying to evangelize them and thank them and show them, um, you know, our support and, you know, blessing for being here because of that. Yeah. Well, Ellie, I think that image is going to be an image that's going to make its way onto the show notes page. So for all those mobile listeners right now, that is an image that you can expect to see. Just go to the show notes page at socialbusinessengine.com slash podcast and uh, just find episode 54 with Ellie Deutsch from Garrett Popcorn. Now, Ellie, before we get, um, we segue over to my one thing question I want to ask you a question about hashtags because several times in this conversation, you have actually made reference to some expressions like hand handcrafted happiness, like no other uh, Garrett surprises. And you used those and many others as hashtags. And I was just wondering if you do any kind of measuring or do you just throw all those hashtags up there and just kind of let them do whatever they do? We do a lot of measuring and analysis on um, our hashtags and even our branded global terms that we use. So um, we've had um, different types of uh, hashtags used globally um, that have worked and some that have not worked. And um, really, you know, we have about five main hashtags that we use. Um, because we really want people to understand our brand, but we also want them to have a little fun too. So, mm -hmm. you know, being a Garrett popcorn, we always can use Garrett popcorn as a hashtag, but more importantly, our world famous signature mix is Garrett mix. So we hashtag that. Um, we also do, as you said, handcrafted happiness. That's a fun one um, for our fans. And we have more and more people posting that um, every day. And then we also have a fun play on words and we actually have these in shop on our napkins. Um, but love is messy. Um, as when you're eating Garrett popcorn, you might get what we call cheesy fingers from uh -huh. Cheese corn. Um, so we love Garrett. People love Garrett. They want to share it. And they this is the part where people start getting hungry. By the way, cheesy fingers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and we also, you know, we focus on the fact that you know we're a very unique brand in, in a in an awesome situation. But the fact that we have a brand that's like no other. I mean, I don't know any. Um, person in our industry or company that's doing what we're doing, but that also sees themselves as not only a retail and e-commerce brand, but a high-end luxury um, quality um, handcrafted good. Um, if anybody can find one out there, I'd love for you guys to share those with us as we're always looking for people um, to team up with or to model with or, you know, look at. Um, but really, we have a unique brand and that allows us to have a unique set of fans and um, we track all of those hashtags um, in order to see the success and the retention and the usage. And we definitely notice that a lot of those branded hashtags like Garrett Mix are used more frequently than um, a little bit more of our obscure ones like a Chicago tradition. But we um, definitely harp on a Chicago tradition as that's who we are mm -hmm. and where we came from and where we're rooted. Mm -hmm. And Ellie, you mentioned that 2014 was sort of the year of kind of back to basics on your social strategy. And so now 2015, you're really focused on sort of blowing it up. And, and what I mean by that is just really expanding it from everything you're describing. So is there anything that you want to elaborate on in terms of how you're executing the strategy and, and kind of what you see, you know, as we go through 2015 and into 2016? Sure. Um, yeah, 2014 was kind of our reset year. And um, as I always think in social media, you know, your strategy is forever evolving. So it's never set mm -hmm. in stone. And there's always an opportunity to grow and learn with the evolving medium um, that is social media. Um, and so for us, you know, we really took it as a time to learn and analyze how we were doing. Um, and 
use that as a launching point to get into 2015, which we focus um, ultimately on emotion. So we're looking at it as how do we, you know, continue the Garrett story that everybody has um, and have them share it with people who maybe haven't experienced Garrett popcorn and um, continue the emotional connection with the brand, the nostalgia, um, and the story that everybody can share. Um, so we're, one thing we're doing is kind of looking at um, newer channels in social media um, and how that relates to our brand and a younger dem demographic. So, um, you know, the hot marketing topic, topic is how you get to millennials. And um, we have fans, you know, from like this uh, baby Garrett from, you know, six months old all the way, you know, to grandparents that have been with uh, the Chicago tradition for over th three generations. So for us, um, we really have to try to find a balance in targeting um, all different types of demographics. And, you know, we look at, uh, you know, what a lot of top brands are doing and figure out how we can use our analytics to really dive into the right channels that are going to help us tell our story better. And, you know, that's not every single social channel that's out there. But, um, for example, we just launched um, a Tumblr uh, page in January um, that we had been working on for a few months as we saw it really relevant. People were sharing and tumbling photos of Garrett Popcorn, um, and we wanted to continue to, you know, reward our fans and recognize them and thank them for um, being brand advocates and, you know, also look for new opportunities for us and reach a different demographic. So I would hope that continuing on that year of emotion and even um, just the mobile world that we live in today, we can um, look at more in real time um, and connected apps like Snapchat or Vine um, and, and, you know, find new opportunities for our brand. Cool. Cool. So the year of emotion and just allowing it to evolve. So fantastic. Well, Ellie, let's segue to my one thing question. And this is where I ask you if there's any one thing that you could change about the way that business is conducted today, what would that be? If there's one thing that I could change about how business is conducted today, I would definitely say um, the ability to socialize your company or brand um, in a more fruitful, direct, one-to-one um, -one relationship type of setting with your customers. Um, there's a lot of corporate you know, red tape around the ways that companies and uh, businesses work. And if everybody was to engage in real time and, you know, have that one-to-one -one relationship and continue to build um, as a company um, their social strategy and their social engagement and following, I think that we would all be way more successful um, instead of, you know, having to work on some content, you know, two, three months out or a quarter out, um, depending on, you know, where you come from and what your guidelines are. Um, so more real-time marketing, and I think that's the great part about where we are today. You know, everybody has their mobile within, you know, arm's reach of them at almost all times. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be awesome to find a way that marketers can connect with people um, more organically and in real time. Terrific. So socialize the business in real time and at the human level, I think I heard you say, right? Yeah. Humanize yeah. your brand. Yeah. Fantastic. Love it. Well, Ellie Deutsch from Garrett Popcorn, thank you so much for sharing your story about how Garrett Popcorn has gone from a local Chicago brand to a global brand that creates sticky fingers and lots of great emotions. And as I said earlier, I will share the things that we discuss here today on our show notes page, let people know how they can connect with you and the Garrett popcorn brand online. Well, I'm hyper social and I love talking to everybody and hearing their own stories or, you know, views on social media. So I totally welcome any tweets, LinkedIn messages, emails, whatever it is. And you can find me, um, anywhere online at Ellie Deutsch um, on Twitter, Ellie Deutsch on LinkedIn, EllieDeutsch.com. Um, but most importantly, you can find Garrett Popcorn um, at, at Garrett Popcorn and, on Twitter and Instagram and social media pages as well as GarrettPopcorn.com. Fantastic. And of course, I will have all those links in the show notes page. Ellie, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate your time and I hope to see you again lighting up a stage at a conference near me one day very soon. Thanks, Bernie. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Terrific. everybody.
Well, Ellie, I want to remind everybody that they can pick up their digital copy of Social Business Journal Volume 2, a how-to guide on influencer marketing that we produced in cooperation with Cision, and that's available at socialbusinessengine.com slash Cision. And you can follow the hashtag SBJV2 for engaging conversation on it. I also like to remind everybody to visit our video channel where you can catch interviews with other inspiring business professionals that are succeeding in modern business through social. And lastly, I also like to remind people that if they like this podcast and they would love to write a review, I would love it. And so we've made that easy. We've got a page uh, on our website at socialbusinessengine.com slash iTunes that links directly to this podcast. So until next time, this is Bernie Borges of Find and Convert, wishing you continued success on your social business journey.